So this morning, while I was reading an article on theming Angular components by Austin McDaniel, uh, I saw something in his code that I don't think I've ever seen before, and it was, an, it was a different way of setting CSS styles programmatically in your JavaScript. Now, historically, if I have wanted to alter my element styles, I would just mutate the style object directly. Here you can see setting things like background color, border, border radius, Z index, zoom, so on and so forth. And when I do this, there are a couple things that have to be noted. Uh, differences between the JavaScript CSS mutation and the CSS styles in your CSS files. And that's that uh, the property names here, because they're object properties, have to use camel case, uh, not the kebab case that we're used to seeing in our CSS files. And then there are also some very small but um, not insignificant differences, like you can't use float, you have to use CSS float. And I think there may be uh, a few other um, caveats like that. Now, in Austin's code, he was using a set property method on the style object. Now, the nice thing about the style, the set property method, is that it allows you to keep your CSS property names in kebab case just like you do in your CSS. So it allows you to keep your uh, CSS property names the same in both your CSS and your JavaScript, and the outliers like CSS float versus float can remain float when using the set property method. So we get full consistency in our JavaScript and our CSS contexts. Uh, now, I mostly just wanted a note to self here because I'd never seen it before, so I wanted to see an action. Uh, so what I have here is a box with some styles on it, and then I'm going to change the styles using either set properties or uh, either mutating the style object's properties directly or using the set property method. And, and that's exactly what these two functions are. So if we jump into the browser, let me just refresh, make sure I have the right code. And here we use the style object directly. So we're going to mutate the properties on their own. And you can see that works perfectly well as we would expect it to. Now, this case uses the set property method. And you can see, of course, that has now mutated these element styles just to, as we would hope, um, including things like being able to set the flow using just the name float as opposed to CSS float. So perfectly well. You can see that uh, in both cases, we're able to use the null value to destroy or remove a CSS property. Uh, in one version, I'm removing Z index. In the next version, I'm using zoom. And you can see as I toggle back and forth, this last property here is going to be zoom one. Then it's going to be Z index one, but no zoom. Then we go back and zoom one, but no Z index. So you can see we're using null in both cases to, uh, to, to, to remove or destroy the CSS property. So, uh, I don't know, I've never seen that before. Um, I hate seeing things that seem fundamental and yet somehow not in my mental model. Uh, so mostly I just wanted to see this in action, ingrain it into my mental model, have it as a tool in the tool belt so that I can use it going forward when and if I think it's appropriate. And um, hopefully if you haven't seen it, you are now familiar and uh, as excited as I am.